everybody, and welcome to this episode of the I Hate Matt Wall Poetry Podcast, where today I'm fucking pissed. I'm in a bad fucking mood, and this is going to be a fucking rant. A rant. So if you like hearing me get fucking angry and fucking dropping shit, fucking stick around. Cause, because I have a fucking lot to say about this shit. What shit, Matt? What are you talking about, buddy? What's happening? Today we're going to be talking about small press submission fees and the egos of writers. Okay? Which, I have a fucking ego. It's fine. All of us do. But there are ways to fucking do it right. But I'm fucking mad. That's what this is going to be about. If you haven't subscribed to this YouTube channel yet, do so now. If you haven't subscribed to this podcast yet, do it now. If you haven't given this show five stars on whatever fucking platform it is that you listen to it on, do that fucking now. It's the right thing to fucking do. Fucking if you're watching this on YouTube, hit the fucking like, hit the fucking share, leave a fucking comment. Let me know how your fucking day is going. I'm fucking curious. Okay? Jesus fucking Christ. (sighs) Ah. And now, before we go any further, I do want to recognize those badass motherfuckers who make shit like this possible and who fucking make me fucking smile. So let me give a big thank you to those fuckers on Patreon who I love so much. Fucking Michael, Cedar, and Harry. You guys are the shit. I also want to give a thank you to you fuckers on the YouTube thank you crew. I want to give a thank you to Patrick, to Britt, to JH, to Jan, to Deb, to Ethan, and to Julia. You guys are fucking awesome. Way more awesome than a lot of other motherfuckers. So thank you. Um, I also want to give a thank you to you fucking classic fucks over there in the fucking Anarchy crew. I want to give a thank you to Bunny, to Nate, to Mindy, to Thomas, to Tim, J. To Shaylin, to Tim G, to Chill Baby, to Tamara, to Adam. You guys are the shit. Let's just fucking say it. And then the biggest thank you again, like every time. The two motherfuckers who put their fucking money where their motherfucking mouth is. The Chappies over there in the Chat Book of the Month Club. I want to give a big Thank you to Caitlin and Chase. You guys are fucking awesome. Oh my god, I'm so fucking angry right now, dude. Okay, I'm trying to fucking calm down. It's fucking still early, and it's a fucking Sunday. Like, what the fuck, dude? It's early. This is the the first words I've spoken today, so, like, my voice is all like, what's happening? So, what I normally do on a Sunday is I will go through my email if I don't have an idea for what I'm going to do a show about. I go through my emails because I'm subscribed to quite a few different um, little things that drop me messages letting me know what articles are up and shit like that. And I usually save them to read in a situation like this where I don't have an idea right off the bat for a show. And I stumbled upon this fucking thing. Okay, now this was from Lit Mag News, and it is a guest post by Jenna, oh man, I thought I had this name down before, Um, Revicchio. Jenna, if you ever listen to this, I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing your last name wrong. Or fuck, your first name wrong for that matter. It could be Jean or something, I don't fucking know. I'm not paid to read, I'm paid to write. (laughs) Jenna Revicchio, Revicchio, I think is how you say her name. Um, She is the editor-in-chief of The Opiate Magazine. She is the author of Corona Shun Year, Volumes 1 and 2, Lindsay Lohan Stole My Life, a Tate Carmichael novel, and She's Lost Control. Um, so that is Jenna Revicchio. I think I fucking nailed it that time. Good Lord, look at me. And basically, she wrote an article called On Submission Fees and the Belief that Publishers Are Pirates. 
and this was posted on May 4th. Be with you. Now, this is a, a very long article, and I'm not going to read it like I have been reading things in the past. I'm going to paraphrase some stuff, and I'm going to talk about some, like, key things in here that fucking happened that I want to hit. She has some views that I agree with and some views that I don't. And one of the things... No, I'm not going to fucking jump ahead here. Dude, I'm fucking getting mad already, dude. And I want you guys to know, I'm not mad at Jenna. I'm mad at you, okay? You are the person I'm mad with, the person listening to this, okay? And you'll find out why. And and it's not like I'm not going to love you anymore. Like, like we could hug and kiss and make up and all that shit. It's fine. I just... Um, I don't know how to say it. Like, a lot of this hits home for me as a small publisher. See, the funny thing is, the funny fucking thing is, I've been doing this for so long, I didn't even realize that that's what I was doing. I, and like a lot of other small presses and small publishers, we do this because we, like, want to do it. It's like a fucking compulsion. It's a fucking need. You know, like we don't do it because we're going to fucking get rich off of this shit. We don't even fucking do this because we're going to be able to pay the gas bill with this shit. We do it because we fucking love it. I swear to God, I think people think that I make a lot of money off of doing um, the blood rag, which I don't even fucking know how that's possible, and we'll get into that later. But like doing like weird mask and doing when I was doing the M Zine and Cinecrypt and um, RVG Z and all these other zines I was doing. I think people fucking think that I make a lot of money off of that, dude. I make fucking nothing off of those things. Like there was a while where weird mask got to a point where I thought I could make a living off a of weird mask. And to be honest, I almost was making more money off of um, weird mass ad revenue, like off the website than I was off of actually selling the fucking zines because I wasn't printing that many zines because I couldn't fucking afford to print that many zines. Oh man. Now, again, with Weird Mass, some months were better than others. For those of you who don't know, I did a, like, a Pulp Fiction or a New Weird Fiction zine for 25 issues. And it didn't start doing well until issue 6 or 7. And I didn't start, like, making what I thought was, like oh, wow, I could definitely pay for the next issue and maybe put a couple bucks in my pocket. That didn't happen until, like, issue, like, 18 or 19. And then by that time, I was getting really bummed out with the submissions I was getting. Like, I wasn't getting, like, really good shit. And so, and then there was, like, printing issues and all this other shit, like, that comes up whenever anyone does any fucking thing like this. And so then there was like a year gap between issue 24 and issue 25. So when issue 25 finally came out, it like did not um, perform at the level that the previous issues had. And so at that point, I was just done with it because that was a lot of fucking work. Anyway, and we'll get into that shit in a little bit here. But it, it's just it's like we do this because we want to. I make decent money. Off of selling my chapbooks on Etsy and my books on Amazon. Okay? The collections that I put together, I make almost nothing off of those. Especially the blood rag, since the blood rag has always been a dollar. And then it cost me 70 cents to mail it. Plus I gotta print the shit out and get an envelope. So at the end of the day, it's almost like I'm paying to put that out. So that's when I just said, fuck it, I'll just put it up on my website and people can download it. I'll print some out and when people order shit from my store, I'll add those things in there. But this is kind of a big deal to me right now because the first issue of the Bloodshed Review is going to be coming out um, probably within the next few weeks. Yeah, probably within the next few weeks. I have the first issues... Um, 
contributors set up and we're ready to go and all this other anyway we'll get to that in a minute so in this article she was talking about publishers charging submission fees and how she with the opiate didn't want to charge submission fees for a long time and then finally decided like i can't fucking keep this up and there's going to be some changes here if i'm going to continue to do this one of those changes is I'm. I think she said I'm. Gonna, she's going to charge two dollars for submission fees. The second was she was going to have to do print on demand, which fucking sucks. And like that, I did that with the last issue of Weird Mask, and I hated it. And it felt like there was no soul in it. I was really bummed out by it. But whatever. Like the opiate might be a completely different looking uh, magazine than the stuff I've been doing. But the last thing was was that. Um, she wasn't going to be giving contributor copies anymore. And I was like, oh, shit. Like, that's probably not going to go over well, you know? And she said that a lot of people got pissed off that she was charging submission fees. And that people called her things like a thief, a crook, a capitalist pig, and all this other shit. And for a $2 submission fee after paying the fees to whatever service she uses for this, um, she makes like a dollar sixty four, whatever. Okay. But the thing she didn't get a pushback on was the contributor copies. And that blew my fucking mind. I'm like, no shit. Like motherfuckers don't care. And then I was thinking about it of all the zines I've done, all the publications I put out. There was only one time when somebody wrote me and said they didn't get their contributor copy. Now, does that mean the mail service worldwide has been really good this whole time? Doubtful. I fucking doubt that that's the fucking case. But there was one fucking person who wrote me, and this is like years, saying they didn't get their contributor copy. I guarantee that like things have gotten lost in the mail before. But this blew my mind... Because, like, for a lot of these things, and a lot of the things I do, I don't pay for the work I'm getting from people. I pay you with contributor copies because I'm figuring, well, I'm fucking selling these fucking things. I'm fucking hustling them. Like, the writers can go hustle them and make their $5 or $10 that I would have given them for their fucking thing. But I'm thinking about it, and I've also never had anybody hit me up and ask me for more copies. And I thought that was kind of weird. I was thinking about it. Like, I never had somebody say, like, oh, hey, I sold all those copies. Can I get more? And I was like, what the fuck is that? That's fucked up. Shouldn't these fucking writers be, like, fucking proud to fucking hawk their shit? And then I was thinking about it more and thinking about the writers that I know and all this other shit. And for the most part, writers I know will let me know, or they'll post about it, hey, I got accepted in... Blah, 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 blah. And they're really excited about the acceptance. And for the most part, I never fucking hear another thing about it. I hear more that people get accepted into things than I hear when the things fucking come out. What the fuck is that? Are these writers... Are you, writers listening to this, are you more excited to get accepted than you are to share your work with people when it is in print? Like, what the fuck is that? I'm like racking my brain right now and I could maybe think of like maybe two or three, maybe, and I don't even know if I can name them, but just remembering seeing somebody say, hey, my shit got published in this click this link to pick up a copy or read it or whatever, you know? And it's a lot easier, true, when your work is just being published online. And, like, you can go, here, check it out. And then I'm thinking about it, and, like, the first, I think, ten. So, nine issues of the Blood Rag are up on my website for free. For a free fucking download, okay? That is, like... There's been at least five poets in each issue of the Blood Rag. 
and the the ninth issue had nine poets in it. Okay, I don't think I've been tagged in a single fucking post that said, "Hey, that poem I got some that got accepted by the Blood Rag. You could download it for free now and get a copy." I don't think that's happened. So what the fuck? I've seen people say, "Hey, I got accepted," but I haven't seen people say, "Hey, go download this." And it's not even like a thing about money. Like, I don't get anything for that. But it's just the whole mentality of writers. They know they're starving artists. They know, like, they're not making any money on this. They want accolades to for people to know that they've been accepted. But do they think that their writing is so fucking poor and shit that they don't actually want anyone to fucking read it? They just want the pats on the back when they get accepted? What the fuck is that? So one of the things that I don't agree with, with Jenna here, Jenna says, the cool thing about asking for submission fees is that it weeds out a bunch of the casual writers. So you don't have to read as much stuff because according to Jenna, only 5% of the submissions she gets are worth reading. So 95% of the shit she's reading is shit. Now, as somebody who has had magazines that get a lot of submissions to that is true like a lot of the stuff you get isn't very good um and i used to feel bad like when i was doing weird mask if i didn't read the whole story you know someone sends a story and i'm not reading the whole thing and i'm like going dude like this person wrote like three thousand to five thousand words like you know i should fucking read the whole thing before i make a decision and then finally, I was talking to a dude who is a very smart guy that I just don't talk to anymore. Um, and he said, you know what? Just read the f- like the first couple sentences, the first paragraph. If it doesn't grab you, the story is not going to grab you. If people don't know how to fucking grab you at the very beginning of a story, don't bother reading the rest of it. Because it's going to drag. And that helped me out a lot. But it still sucks when you get a bunch of submissions this way. Now, what I will say about this is this, like, idea that a lot of small publishers have. And I think they say this in hopes that they can, like, convince writers that this is the truth. They go, well, we only charge submission fees to make sure that we only get serious, like, people sending in the shit because if if you're not serious you're not going to pay a submission fee so with that said since that is true this next thing must be true which is if you are a serious writer you will pay a submission fee that's fucking bullshit and what Jenna says in her thing she's like I don't see how paying a nominal submission fee and what she thinks that is and what's acceptable to her is something under five dollars that that's that should be fine the problem here is just like when we were talking about the state of the publishing industry last year or whatever we went through all of the places that were accepting submissions that were like non-specific like just you could submit here if you want kind of thing it wasn't like you have to be a one-legged lesbian who lives on the moon in order to submit to this magazine it wasn't anything like that just like straight up like submissions and it was something crazy like you would have to spend like seventeen hundred dollars a month to submit to the places that you could submit to okay when you add up all the places that charge submission fees that's fucking ludicrous it's ridiculous so a working writer who's actually making a living writing, which, haha, I understand. How could anyone think that that's okay? And a lot of these magazines charge a lot. Like some of them only charge a couple bucks. Whatever, fine. If you think that's a fine thing to do, whatever. But some of these places are charging like 20, 25, 30, 35 bucks for a fucking poem or a short story. That's fucking crazy. 
No one's going to fucking do that. But to them, they're like, well, you know, we're getting a couple bucks and we're only getting like eight submissions to read. You know, somehow or another, we have a staff of eight editors and, um, you know, we split the money. We get a pizza on Thursday and like we watch reruns of Seinfeld, you know, like whatever the fuck it is that these motherfuckers do. They think this is okay. Okay. But the idea that you are not fucking serious if you don't pay this shit, that fucking pisses me the fuck off. Because, like, I don't think I've ever fucking paid a submission fee to anything. And in case you didn't know, I'm as serious as a fucking heart attack. And I'm fucking much more serious than most of the motherfuckers that you know. So how fucking dare you? It's just, it's fucking stupid. I would never say to somebody, oh, you're not serious because you don't have money. That's fucking stupid. That's a classist bullshit fucking thing to say. Yes, will you get less submissions if you ask for money for them? Of course you will get less submissions. But does that mean they're better submissions? Fuck no. I know plenty of people who have lots of money who are fucking talentless hacks in any form of art, especially in fucking film. A lot of the people I made movies for, a lot of the producers who paid for these movies to be made, did so because they couldn't get jobs anywhere else. So they decided, well, I want to be a star, so I will be the star of my own movie. Write me a movie. I will pay for it. It's a bunch of fucking bullshit. There are plenty of talentless fucking hacks who have money, who come from money, where money is not an issue. And you assume because they have money that the quality of their writing is better? Do you know how fucking stupid that is? That is some fucking classist fucking bullshit, dude. But I will say that a lot of these people who put out, like, these magazines, a lot of them know that they're not going to make any money doing this. They do it because they love to do it. Whether they love the fact that it makes them feel important or whether they actually love, like, trying to find something. The whole reason... Why I do the Poetic Anarchy thing. Why I started Poetic Anarchy. Why I started Poetic Anarchy Press. Why I started doing the blood rag. All of this shit is because when I read poetry, most of the poetry I read is fucking garbage to me. I do not like it. And I want to find poetry that I fucking like. So the best way to find poetry that I like is to put out poetry that I like. In hopes that if I put poetry out that I like in a certain style, that that will inspire people to also write things kind of like that. And maybe they could start their own zines and their own presses and their own websites and all this other shit. I'm trying to build the fucking community because I'm bored with the garbage shit that you find in magazines. It's awful. And a lot of people who put magazines out are doing it because they don't think that the stuff they either like is being put out or the people that they like are being put out. That the voices they want to hear from are not being represented. I don't know. It just it pisses me off, dude. And anyway, so to continue on with this article, um, Jenna says... That she thinks it's wrong for people to lambast small presses since the number of small presses is dwindling. This is also true. Why the fuck are these people like calling out like, oh, this motherfucker's charging a submission fee now. Oh, they're just like the rest. These motherfuckers. Blah, 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 blah. Fucking writers, dude. Now, I I would just say poets, but I'm going to lump writers into this too. So I'm using poets and writers um, synonymously here. 
because I've dealt with this with Weird Mask and I dealt with it with Emzine and I dealt with it with the Blood Rag and I've dealt with it with um, Cinecrypt and all the other zines that I've done. The thing that pisses me off is these fucking writers do not promote the fact that they're actually in something or promote the fucking magazine itself. They want you to, as a small press, they want you to court them and give them money and put their stuff out. Sometimes they don't even care if you give them money, which is fucking crazy, but they want you to put their stuff out. So you put their stuff out and then nothing happens. They don't tell their friends. They don't tell their rich friends, which is something she says in here. If you have rich friends, get them to fucking put money into the arts. Get them to buy a bunch of copies of the magazine if they want to support art. But these writers, you guys, you guys that I'm pissed off at, you guys don't fucking do anything to promote the actual fucking magazine that you're in. So what? People know that you got accepted by something, but you hide it? You don't tell people that your poem is in this fucking thing? That your short story about robot sex slaves is in some fucking magazine? What's wrong with you? Are you ashamed of that? Why the fuck aren't you telling the world that your shit is in the stuff? The fucking ego, the fucking elitist fucking behavior, the fucking... Entitled. That's what I'm fucking looking for here. Entitled fucking writers. So you get accepted in something. What are you going to do? Are you going to ask for like 10 copies so you could sell it to people? You know, when you go table somewhere. Oh, wait, that's right. You don't table anywhere. You don't do anything. You don't have a following. You don't fucking care. You just want someone to discover you. If you're not going to fucking do the work, stop. Especially now. See, here's the thing. 30 fucking years ago, writers could fucking complain. Well, you know, like, I just haven't, you know, been discovered. I think I'm just like, you know, like 10 years ahead of where the magazines are and we're just not seeing eye to eye and... Like, no one, no one gets me, man. No one gets me. We are in the age of the fucking internet. I'm going to fucking let you guys in on a big fucking little secret here. It's going to blow your mind. Guess what? None of you need a magazine to put your stuff out. You can do whatever you want with your stuff and build an audience and build a base that w will be more people reading your stuff than if it got into the opiate or something like that. And again, no shade on the opiate. I'm not trying to talk shit on it. I'm just saying. I stopped submitting my stuff to magazines for the most part because I put chapbooks out every month and I have my own magazine or my own zine, I have the blood rag. And now Bloodshed Review is gonna come out, although I'm probably not gonna have much stuff of mine in the review. But what I'm saying is, I publish a lot because I write a lot and I have to fucking keep going and keep doing it. Other than that, there is no difference between you and me. I just said, well, I'm gonna do this, so then I started fucking doing it. You don't need a magazine to put your stuff out if you want people to know about it. All you need to do is let people know that you actually fucking do something and then show the fucking receipts. It's one thing to go, yeah, I got my stuff in this magazine. Isn't that great? <laughs> okay, bye. And it's another thing to go, look, motherfucker. Look, here's my shit. Look, see it? See it? Here's my fucking poem. Read it, you piece of shit. Showing someone the actual art is the idea of being an artist. You make art for people to consume it. You don't make art so you could brag about being accepted into a fucking magazine. What the fuck is wrong with you? Jesus fucking Christ. What do you expect the small press world to give to you in the age of the fucking internet where anyone can fucking become whatever they want if they fucking try if they put one foot in front of the other and fucking just do the thing 
in that article too, she said something like where people say, well, I could do a better job than this. And then they don't. Why the fuck not? Shit or get off the fucking pot. It's so fucking stupid. You do not need a publisher to fucking build an audience. You do not need a publisher, a small press or a large press to make a difference in the world that you are fucking creating art in. All you have to do is fucking shove it down motherfuckers throats so that you're fucking doing it. Oh no, I don't I'm not into the business side of anything, you know. I'm just about the art. Well then why are you bitching about a submission fee, you fuck? Just if you don't care about the business side, then shut the fuck up and pay the fucking submission fee. Money doesn't mean nothing to you. You could do it. These fucking people, dude. I want more places for people to publish. I want more places for people to get into because it's not just about getting your shit into something. It's about the community that you build, the network that you build when there's more places to submit to and you end up having relationships with those people. That's important because when you start building stuff like this and you start having these relationships with people, you know what else you can do? You can start putting on events because crowds will cultivate around this shit. I think the biggest downfall of the internet is people thinking globally instead of locally. And that that's probably a topic for another day. But there are really not many scenes anymore. I don't know. Maybe I'm one of these fucking weirdo fucks because I knew what life was like before the internet and after the internet. And a lot of you listening to this don't really remember what like scenes were like before the internet. It was a very different fucking place, but we need to adapt so we don't fucking die. So that's what I've been trying to do. And a lot of you are just like, well, you know, God, what the fuck is your problem? Do the thing or don't do the thing or shut the fuck up. And maybe this is kind of tough love shit, but this fucking article pissed me the fuck off. Because I don't think I'm ever going to charge submission fees, but maybe one day I will. Maybe one day I'll go, you know what? I would like to at least fucking pay for my time to fucking read all these fucking submissions. And then what the fuck? Is some motherfucker going to come at me? I fucking dare you. Jesus fucking Christ. Writers out there, what do you think you are owed What do you think you deserve? Why do you think the world fucking revolves around you and your fucking poetry and your fucking short stories that no one has ever read? What the fuck do you think you need? Jesus fucking Christ, dude. And again, this is me just fucking being that whole fucking thing where it's like all these motherfuckers who are bitching on fucking Twitter and Instagram and shit. These are motherfuckers who've never gotten into a fight, who've never got their ass kicked, who never missed a fucking meal, who never fucking woke up on Christmas and didn't have any fucking presents. These motherfuckers think everything should be fucking handed to them. I'm not going to fucking placate your stupid asses, dude. Fuck you. If you were worth your fucking salt, you would fucking do something. Instead of bitching that all these places are charging submission fees, publish your own shit. Start a fucking mailing list. Put something together. Start an open mic in your town. Do something. And quit being such a fucking little bitch. Jesus fucking Christ. (sighs) So how I'm doing stuff now. Like people have been asking me if I'm accepting submissions to the uh, Bloodshed Review. And here's the thing. I'm not. I'm not accepting submissions to the Bloodshed Review. Fuck you guys. Okay? This is how this is going to go. If you want to submit anything to me, you could submit to the Blood Rag. This thing right here. It is a single sheet zine that my hope is, is that people will print this out, 
and put it everywhere. So, and there have been people, and I keep threatening to post these pictures, but there are people who get in the zine and print a bunch of copies out and put them up around their town. That's exactly what should be fucking happening. So, you can submit to the blood rag. If you get into the blood rag and I like your shit and I put some of your stuff in there repeatedly, guess what's going to happen? I'm going to fucking ask you to be in the bloodshed review. So the blood rag is like the entry point. Okay, so again, um, I think I'm going to go back to 14 lines or less. Like right now, it's any poem, 16 lines or less, you could submit. But um, I think I'm going to drop it down to 14 lines again. And maybe someday I'll drop it down to 10. I don't fucking know. I don't give a shit. But here's the thing. All of you out there, and if you're a writer out there thinking, oh, this motherfucker's a piece of shit, I'll show him. Do it. Show me. Go out and put your own shit out. Go make your own fucking chat books. Make your own fucking magazine. Fucking do it. I dare you. Please, for the love of God, shut your fucking mouth and put your fucking work out. That's all anyone's asking you to do. And let me tell you something else. If I put you out, here's here's what I'm going to do. If I put you in the blood rag or the bloodshed review, if I put you in that, and you don't promote that, you're never going to get in again. Done. Dunzo. Why the fuck should I fucking push you if you're not going to do a fucking ounce of anything? I can tell you right now, this issue of Blood Rag right here, four people out of the nine people in here never said a fucking word about it. I'm never going to put your fucking shit out again. Do not submit. If you're thinking to yourself right now, Oh, you know what? I've submitted to the blood rag. I've been in the blood rag before. If you never fucking told anyone about it, if you never put them up anywhere, if you never fucking pointed people to the fucking website, don't fucking bother. I am not here to stroke your fucking ego. Fuck you. You either want the world to read your work or you are full of shame and you hide and you just want the back pats on acceptance. Fuck you. And here's the thing. For all you small presses out there, stop publishing poets who do not fucking tell anyone that they've been fucking published. Fuck them. Fuck you. The whole fucking thing. Do not placate these fucking egos any longer. Fuck them. Oh my God. So I know a lot of writers are going to be mad about this episode, but I fucking guarantee you, a lot of fucking publishers, a lot of editors are going to be like, dude, thank you so much for saying that. And here's the next thing I'm going to say. For all you publishers out there, if you like what I said right now, fucking prove it. Publicly fucking prove it. Say, oh my God, listen to this. Listen to what this motherfucker said about you dumbass fucking egotistical fucking entitled little bitches. I fucking dare you. But guess what's going to happen? My guess is none of you will say a fucking word because you're fucking scared. And that's fucking ludicrous that we're being held hostage by the fragile fucking egos of these fucking comatose fucking fucks. Oh my God. So I'm giving credit where credit's due. Jenna Revicio from The Opiate. Thank you so much for writing this article that really fucking got me going and pissed me off. Honestly, everything you said, I agree with, except that shit about quality of work having anything to do with the cost of a submission fee. And to, to give Jenna some credit here, she did say, if you can't pay for that, if you can't do the submission fee, write me and tell me that. And for, to her credit, that was fucking awesome, and I give her fucking props for doing that. Seriously. Like, with me, like, every time I put out an issue of the blood rag, it costs me about 30 bucks. It probably costs me 30 bucks to put out an issue of the blood rag, okay? And I don't make any money on that at all. I send out contributor copies, which I'm probably not even going to fucking do anymore. Fuck it. Let's see if any of you bitch about it. I don't, uh, yeah. So, uh, that, that cost me, like, 30 bucks. My chat books, on the other hand... Like this one right here, Me as an Action Figure by Matt Wall. Get it now, Matsy. Link down below. This 
like these cost me probably anywhere from uh, depending on the book and if I get a good deal on paper that month or whatever, they they probably cost me around a hundred bucks to put these out a month, and I make money on those. You know, so what the fuck? Doing these fucking things, the fucking Poetic Anarchy anthologies, the fucking Blood Rag, and I'm guessing the Bloodshed Review, will probably, I'll be operating at a loss for those. But I do it because I fucking love it. <sighs> My god, I'm so fucking pissed right now. Anyway, let's get into those fucking heavy lubed butt plugs. Blood Rag, issue 10. This is issue 9, actually. Issue 10 is out now. Um, at IHateMattWall.com, just go into the menu bar and click um, the blood rag, and you will have the first 10 issues. Actually, issue 11 might be up and out by that time. Yeah, don't even bother going to my Etsy shop for the blood rag anymore. I'm going to take them all down. Um, there's no need to have them up there anymore. Um, but download them, print them out, and paste them all over the town. Look, right here, at the bottom of it, it says... Make copies, post everywhere. Do the fucking thing. Me as an action figure. Out now. Um, April's chapbook is supposed to be a split book between me and Bunny Wild. Um, I'm hoping that'll be out by the end of the month. Like, before the end of the month, but at least by the end of the month. Um, there's some logistical shit that I'm dealing with with that one. Um, and winner of your mom's sodomy prize for poetry. Um... My paperback book of poetry, mostly new poems from 21 to 22, that should be out um, by June. People who back the Indiegogo campaign will probably be able to get their copies by the end of the month, and then um, it will be general public um, in June. All right, so with that said, keep buying my books. Type hard, everybody. Let everyone know that you've watched this, and I will talk to you all later. I just want to give a quick thanks to those people who make these videos possible. Anarchy Crew and my followers on Patreon, I appreciate the hell out of you guys, and thank you so much for keeping me going to keep this content possible. You guys are awesome. And if you'd like to join the crew or the Anarchy Crew, just hit the join button beneath this video, and if you'd like to become a member of my Patreon, you can run over to the link down below to do that as well. Thank you.